Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Train Simulator Classic, aka Railworks. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Denver and Rio Grande Western SD9 pack by Dovetail Games. Oh wow, they actually do something on the rare occasion. The SD9 is a diesel locomotive built by General Motors Electromotive Division between January 1954 and June 1959, powered by EMD 567C, producing 1700 horsepower. Externally, they are very similar to the SD7, with an improved and much more maintainable engine setup. <coughs> A total of 515 were produced, uh, with many having been rebuilt and still in service, which is actually pretty wild, to be perfectly honest. Uh, a few have been preserved. Uh, a few are in operation for preservation. <coughs> This is a pretty long-lived locomotive, which is kind of wild, uh, but kind of neat, kind of neat. So in this pack, all you were getting is one singular model with a driver and non-driver variant, and it's going to be this right here, and you will also get they call it a mule gondola. It's it's just a gondola. It's a low sign of gondola. Uh, nah. I love that the lettering and the car is weathered, but the numbers are not. Nah. Not really the focus of this, because style you're getting in the pack really of note is this right here. The Denver and Rio Grande Western bought ten of these. Uh, the scenarios are for the Salt Lake City route. However, we are on the Tennessee Pass route because uh, why not, really? And right off the bat, you're going to hear a difference between this and that. That is the old Kuju F7 that has been repainted. Over and 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 put into every single American pack ever. She is standing right square inside of it too. How wacky. But uh Yeah. And that is the original Kuju sound that you are hearing over there. This has been upgraded. It is very sad that you have to do this to make some of this stuff sound decent. But this sounds just like that when you get it because the heaven forbid anybody affiliated with DTG bother to ever get new American sounds ever <coughs> so uh, you are absolutely gonna want the uh, the 567 sound upgrade uh, I believe that is from training some community uh. I will put a link in the description for the sound upgrade. Uh, I believe I also put it for the uh, the BL2 video I just did because once again, sound upgrade definitely makes a difference. Uh, it, it, does it perfect it? No, not by a long shot, but it helps a little bit. So as you can hear, out of the bat, the idle is a little bit better, a little bit more realistic. A lot more believable than, you know, that. And you know what? The exhaust does not look that bad either. Compared to that. It really does. The overall model doesn't even look that bad. It actually is a step further than what we typically see from uh, somebody like DTM 
who doesn't even bother to model these rivets and bolts and panels these panels are actual 3d objects these hinges are a 3d object these latches are a 3d objects now the hinges are they're by no means an advanced item but they are a physical object rather than just being a, another 2d texture Things like this, though, don't look good. The texturing, nah, not really. Texturing isn't doing it for me. Very low res, very eh, pitiful. Even the headlight models actually look pretty decent, to be perfectly honest. I find it extremely entertaining, though, that the headlights are smaller than the marker lights. It is quite funny. Ew. Talk about an old, outdated model that needs to go in the trash. DTG, delete this. When was this made in particular? Eh, 2015. It's dated now. But it looks better than... The BL2. And the TL-109 that I just looked at which is pretty sad things like that the truth be told a good reskin on this thing would do it wonders because the overall modeling is not half bad which is a pretty normal trend for DTG when they actually decide to do something they tend to do a model pretty decent they just don't do the texturing very well and that is pretty much the same case here the Rio Grande lettering here that is very vibrant yellow versus the stripes that are not vibrant yellow at all it's kind of funny same between here the numbers don't look half bad the lettering yeah it's blurry yeah, for some reason, this is not near as blurry. The small lettering is not as blurry as the stripes. It's kind of funny. So yeah, texturing, nah. Model, sure. Guess what? Oh my god. No advanced brakes. Oh, I love it. sound is not half bad now of course again you're using or I'm using a uh, sound mod I'm using the 567 sound mod so it does change up some stuff however if you don't change it up take a wild guess of what the horn sounds like I know I know I know you guys are gonna be mind blown standard Kuju F7 stuff I'm, I'm not even kidding as far as the sounds go from straight out of the box DLC, it is quite literally copy and pasted from their F7s. Like it, they're identical. Horn, engine, bell, all that. Really like hearing that horn inside the cab. That this horn sounds a lot better than the BL2 that I looked at, uh, which. Yeah, the horn was all right in that, but this this was better. Let's see what else we get to play with. The texturing again inside looks awful, for lack of a better term. Like the look at that night and day difference. That's awful. That's ugly. Reverse gear, dynamic brakes, throttle. Uh, we don't get that. But lights. We get that one. Sanders. Independent brake. Bell. Rear lights. Uh, cab lights. Gauge lights. Step lights. 
Yeah, Bell's not half bad. Of course, it's a sound mod, but it's not bad. Outside, eh. That's the bell it would have. Not the horn. This one actually has a different horn than the standard Kuju F7s, but it would have that bell. Ah. Before we roll away. Before I run into something, let's get our track set. Can't even read that, which is sad because, you know, sitting here in the cab, right here, right up on it, you would think they'd take the time to make shit like that readable, but nope, it is not legible at all. And we don't get windows, we don't get doors, no windows, no doors. Pretty much everything. These are not even real. So yeah, it's... it's uh, 2015 technology. Ugh, headlight. Bright, white, grody. Don't like it. Number boards don't look half bad. I'm assuming you don't get marker lights. Yeah, you don't get marker lights. Truth be told, with the sound mod, this is a locomotive I actually do end up coming back to because it does look half decent. It runs pretty easy. Uh, it's not a hard locomotive to figure out, obviously. It's not an advanced model or anything. I don't care that much for the exhaust under power. I hate the headlights. Speed limit, speedometer is a little bit off. Pretty sure we're speeding, but eh, whatever. Don't care.
I do kind of get a kick out of the fact that there's not a speed, speed limit sign up here. Is there a speed limit sign really anywhere? Or is it just 15 and uh, assume you know what the speed limit is on the main here? Lord. Eh. No speed limit signs. Hmm. Wacky. Oh well. For being a model from 2015, it's not half bad. And you can typically pick it up on sale for $9.99. So, you know, for a sale price, I, I don't know, I don't hate it. As I said, with the sound upgrade, it is one that I tend to come back to, certainly far more than a lot of DTM projects. I, I actually really quite enjoy this model with a really good like texture upgrade across the entire model inside and out. I honestly think it would be a really decent model. <laughs> Unfortunately there are no texture upgrades out there so I'm stuck with it like this but oh well. Ugh, I hate that with the headlights. I do think the horn is too quiet. The engine sound just kind of drowns it out. Even at a distance, which it shouldn't. So I, I do think the horn volume needs to be pushed up a lot. But other than that... Sound upgrade didn't sound half bad on it. Does take a second for our brakes to actually apply, which you know doesn't bother me. And it doesn't come to a screeching halt. And that's, there it is guys, the EMD SD9 from Dovetail Games, oddly enough. It is available on the Steam Store, so do go check it out if it floats your boat, if you're a fan of the Rio Grande. Uh, with the sound upgrade, it's honestly not that bad, uh, especially on sale. It definitely could use some improvement all around, but as a whole almost better than a lot of the stuff we're seeing today so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you next time